In this video, you're about to learn exactly how to get coaching clients in Facebook groups. So if you're ready for more clients, keep watching. Hey, my name's Jason Moss. I'm a multi six figure business coach. And before we dive in, if you're looking for a roadmap that you can follow to help you get more coaching clients more consistently, I put together a free get more clients guide for coaches that walks through some of my best advice. You're definitely going to want to check it out. And all you got to do to get it is click the link above or in the description down below. So the truth is Facebook groups can be a great way of getting new coaching clients. But the reason they don't work for most coaches is because most coaches do a bunch of weird stuff when they join groups. So I wanna start by sharing some of those things that you shouldn't do. And if you do these things, you're probably just gonna get kicked out of groups. The first thing is don't just join a bunch of new groups and then just like post your offer and post like super salesy content in those groups. You're just gonna get kicked out. We have a group that we run, a public group, and when people do this, they just get booted. So it doesn't work. It's not effective. The second thing is don't join a bunch of new groups and then just start cold DMing like hundreds of people in the group, your sales pitch. That does not work either. It's very short term focused. You know, generally the people who don't succeed with Facebook groups are the people who are looking for like quick wins right off the bat. It's like, how do I just join groups and get clients like in like two days? If that's your mindset, you're gonna struggle. So when it comes to what actually works in Facebook groups, I have a rule or a principle that I follow when it comes to engaging in groups. And this is something that you can follow really for so many aspects of online marketing. Oftentimes what trips people up when it comes to marketing themselves online is they think that engaging with people online is different than engaging with people offline. But human beings are human beings, right? And whether you're engaging with someone online in a group or in you know a networking event, there's really no difference. So I want you to think of Facebook groups almost like going to like a networking party. So if you think about like, how would I actually engage with people if I was just showing up to like this group in person? You would probably go, you'd mingle, you'd build relationships, you create connections, and you do it in a way that feels really authentic. And this is the mindset and the attitude for success when it comes to engaging on Facebook groups. If you just think of what would I do if I were engaging in real life? That principle will prevent you from making so many mistakes when it comes to online marketing, particularly with Facebook groups. So just remember, there is no difference between online and offline. And if you can start to show up the same way you would show up offline, then you're gonna create much more success and you're gonna be much more likely to get clients. Develop that awareness to kind of ask yourself, like before I uh, reach out to this person or send this message or post this thing in the group, like is this something that I would do if this were like an in-person event? Would I communicate this way? And if the answer is no, then don't do it. So now that you know what not to do when it comes to Facebook groups, the question you might be asking is, well, how do I actually get clients? Like what, what's the strategy, what's the approach? And so I wanna talk about some steps that you can follow in order to do that on Facebook. The first thing, the most important thing to do before you start engaging in groups is prime your profile. When you are engaging online in Facebook groups, your profile is like the clothes that you would wear to an in-person event. And just like people might look at your clothes and make some snap judgments about who you are and maybe how successful you are. You can do the same thing and you can you can kind of influence the perspective that someone might have on you by just how your profile looks. And a lot of people don't think about this. Like they start engaging in groups and maybe they're even posting really helpful stuff in groups. They're like, I'm not getting clients. And it's because those people who they're engaging with in those groups are clicking over to their profile and checking out their profile. And they have a bunch of like random pictures of them like drinking, you know, in college with their, their beer buddies. <laughs> It doesn't look professional, right? So the first thing you wanna do before you engage in Facebook groups is you wanna prime your profile. Hide any pictures that you wouldn't want other people, potential clients to see. Also, we want a clear bio line in your Facebook profile that shows people who you are and what you do. Some kind of like I help statement is really good. Like I help coaches get more clients. That's what I have in my profile. So having a way of just explaining in one sentence who you are, what kinds of people that you help and the transformation that you really offer is a great way for someone to get a real clear sense of what you do and whether or not what you do is relevant to them when they go check out your profile. We also wanna have some really valuable, useful content already posted on your profile that positions you as an expert. So if you're a health coach, maybe you post some content about you know health tips. So all this stuff will really make a difference. And we wanna make sure that you start here in terms of really making sure your profile is in order before you go start engaging in groups and building those relationships. So once you've primed your profile, the next step is you wanna go find groups to join. This is really important. The right group can make all the difference. Now, in terms of finding these groups, there are really two angles you can take. You can take more 
of a direct approach. In other words, you can just start typing in search terms that are more directly related to the niche that you help. So if you're a health coach, you might start typing in things like health and wellness and just you know go kind of straight down the middle. Sometimes you gotta go a little bit more indirect and you gotta think, okay, you know, maybe my niche is not a niche that's gonna be like congregated together in a group like health and wellness, but you can think, okay, well, what kind of other groups might my niche be in? You know, if you're a leadership coach, you might look at like networking groups for, you know, corporate women, or you might look at, you know, business management groups or things like that. Things that are maybe like one step removed from your niche, but kind of close enough where there's gonna be a little bit of overlap. And really typing those terms into Facebook and starting to put together a list of potential groups that might be a good place for you to hang out and build relationships with your niche. Now, when it comes to narrowing down these groups, there's a couple of other criteria that you wanna look at. The first is you want groups that are large enough where there's good engagement happening and there's a good flow of conversations. If you do wanna join a couple groups, just kinda of look through like, okay, are people commenting? Are people leaving posts? Is there good engagement across the group? Or is this like a ghost town? But on the flip side, you don't want groups that are so large where you're just gonna get lost in the sea of noise. Generally, there's like a goal Goldilocks sweet spot when it comes to group size. And there's not like an exact number that I can give you. It really depends on your niche. Also, we wanna look for groups that have little to no spam. So if you join a group and you check it out and it's just like a bunch of people posting like random spam, these are not groups that we wanna be a part of and engage in. And finally, you just wanna be sensitive to the admin of the group. You might be joining a group that's led by another coach. Oftentimes those are groups that are a little bit harder to engage in because there's like a conflict of interest there. And you know, the person who's leading the group is generally using that group to source clients and might view you as a competitor. So you just wanna be mindful of that. And it's not that you can't succeed in those groups. There are you know, plenty of coaches who will you know, still invite you in and allow you to engage, but you might be a little bit more conservative in those groups in terms of how you engage and what kinds of content that you post versus the group that's just led by someone who really just wanted to bring people together and doesn't really have any intention of you know, using the group as a marketing tool. So your next step is to narrow down your list of groups. And my suggestion is, is to come up with a list of three to five groups that you can join and engage in on a regular basis. Quality is better than quantity here. It's not about like spamming your content in front of like, you know, 100 groups. It's really about choosing a small number of groups that you can show up and really create a presence in so that you you really have like a, an established place in a small number of communities. That's gonna work better for you than just like blind posting, you know, and spamming like, content in like a large number of groups. Okay, so once you've joined these groups, your next step is to introduce yourself. Again, just thinking about this, like how would I engage if I was engaging at a party, you probably wouldn't go to a party and just start like yelling to everyone at that party, like, hey, I'm a coach and here's what I do. You'd probably like go up to people and you'd say like, hi, my name is Jason. And like, you know, this is kind of who I am and what I'm about. An introduction post is really just that. It's introducing yourself. It's sharing a little bit about yourself. It's not meant to be like super promotional. You can maybe add a little bit about like what you do as a coach, but really this is about like you just starting to show up and build a little bit of a presence in the community itself. Sharing an intro post in the three to five groups that you've decided to show up in and starting with that. And one other tip that I recommend, particularly if you're in a group where you know you anticipate there being some challenges in terms of the admin, make friends with the admin. Like you can start engaging on their content and start saying like, wow, this is really helpful stuff and leaving, you know, genuine comments on some of their posts and even, you know, reach out to them and just say, you know, maybe after a couple of days, like, hey, I'm finding this group like really valuable. That stuff goes a long way building a relationship with the admins, they're real people just like you, is going to make it more, much more likely that your content gets approved and that you have better luck, you know, really establishing a presence in these communities. So once you've shared that introduction post, you want to start by engaging on other people's content. The best place to start is by, you know, engaging in other people's conversations. And, you know, chances are there's lots of other people posting stuff in groups, probably lots of threads that you have, you know, relevant insight to add on or share you know, things that can actually help position you as an expert. So for example, maybe you're in a, a group, you know, related to health and wellness and you're a health coach and you're seeing, you know, a woman who's posting about, hey, do you guys have any tips for like healthy meals that, you know, are easy to make that are like paleo friendly or something like that. And you might hop in there and like add some insight and you can, you can share 
share like, hey, you know, I've worked with uh, you know a couple of people on this and like here's what they typically find are some of their favorite recipes and here's some links. Like I love these, I you know, I, I share them with all my clients. And you can kind of frame things in that way a little bit where you kind of slip in like a little bit more of like the leader uh, expert frame. Again, you want this stuff to be subtle. It's not like we're, you know, really on the nose about this, but you can start adding these you know, comments and engaging and, and creating these relationships and connections through adding value. The other thing I like about this, it's not likely to be flagged by admins. Like if you can just show up in this way, it's it's super conversational. It's, you know, you're adding value, you're contributing to the community. This stuff does really well. Now here's what will start to happen. When someone's scrolling through the group and they see like, oh, here's this person and they keep like adding all these really helpful comments. You know, they're sharing a lot of really valuable information. They seem like they really know their stuff. What's the next thing that person's gonna do. They're going to click your image and they're going to head over to your profile. And so now you've got an opportunity to build a little bit more of a relationship with that person. And so you'll start seeing over time. And again, the consistency is the key here. This is not something that you can just show up like for three days and do this and you're gonna get results. It's gonna take weeks to start to build those relationships and maybe even months. But one other tip that can help in terms of leaving comments is you can actually leave video comments on Facebook. So if you wanna record like a video response to someone maybe on your phone, you can actually add that as a comment. So it really stands out when someone's scrolling through a group feed and they see you know a couple of your videos as comments, it can be a great way of building a relationship with someone a little bit more quickly at scale. So I want you to spend the first few weeks in particular of your time in these new groups, just adding comments and, and really working off content that other people People have posted. As you start to establish more of your presence in that community, that's when you can start posting original content to the group itself. What kind of content do you post? Well, I think the most helpful content to post is content that is valuable to your niche, that positions you as an expert by sharing and adding value and contributing to a community. So for example, you know, I'm a business coach, I help coaches get more clients. I might show up in Facebook groups for coaches and just say, you know, hey, here are a couple of key things that I've learned from you know, helping all these coaches get more clients. I wanted to share this with you guys because I think it's gonna help you get more clients too. And you know, here's number one and here's number two and here's number three. That might just be an example of, you know, content that again is helpful and useful positions me as an expert, right? Cause I'm, you know, talking about how I, I help, you know, clients do X, Y, Z, but also is just adding value to the community. Now the key is most people overdo this. You know, they get super salesy in terms of their content. They're posting like content with like call to actions to like, you know, DM them about coaching and stuff like that. This stuff is, is very likely to get flagged. What we really want to do is use the groups as a bridge, as a way of, you know, posting content and adding value to people see you as an expert and then they go check out your profile and we can build a little bit of a deeper connection and relationship with them there. So helpful, valuable content that's insightful, that answers the biggest questions that your niche has, that positions you as an expert. This is the type of content that's gonna make you stand out in groups and create leads and sales opportunities on the back end. One other tip to follow when it comes to posting content in groups is you wanna speak from first person perspective. There's something very disarming about like when you speak from I, it's like, hey, I, I just wanted to share, like there's a couple of things I've noticed when it comes to helping coaches and I thought this might be helpful to some other people in the group versus if you are a coach, who is struggling to get clients and you you know are struggling with XYZ you're probably making these mistakes that stuff is much more like markety it comes off much more aggressive and it's again much more likely to get flagged okay so if you're doing a good job at all this you're creating you know helpful comments on people's posts you're adding your own content through your own post you're going to see that people start commenting and engaging on your content and you're probably going to see some opportunities to build relationships with people on a deeper level so these might be people who are commenting back on your posts or you know people who you're having a, a little bit of a back and forth conversation with through comments or you know people who you just see like hey I know I can help that person like on a deeper level like here's what I think they need this is where like reaching out to people and opening up DMs can be pretty useful and helpful you want to use the DM as kind of like a step two so when you're having a little bit of a back and forth with someone in a group and you're you're seeing an opportunity to take things a little bit deeper that's when you can DM them the analogy there is like 
like that's kind of like a public post. People are kind of going back and forth. It's like a small group of people like hanging out at a party. And then let's say you're maybe talking to one of those people at the party and like you're like, oh, I really like this person or I feel like, you know, there's an opportunity to, to connect on a deeper level. You might say like, hey, do you want to go like grab a drink by the bar and, you know, talk a little bit more. That person might be like, yeah, that sounds great. So that's like a DM. You know, the same thing goes for Facebook groups, right? So if you see there's there's that opportunity there, you can just reach out to people on a deeper level and start building those relationships one-to-one via DMs. Now, in terms of navigating these DMs, this is where, you know, having some, some more friendly, casual back and forth to start that conversation can be useful and then progressing to more of like an exploratory conversation if it makes sense about how, you know, you might be able to help them in terms of your coaching. That's really like the, the approach that I recommend when it comes to this. All of this is predicated on building great relationships, taking the long-term approach, not being like super short-term oriented in terms of like, I'm just gonna show up in a group on day one and just like spam people my pitch so I can get clients. If you can follow these, these real like human principles, in terms of engaging and showing up over the long term, Facebook groups can be a great way to build your audience, to connect with more great people who could be an awesome fit for working with you, to create more leads and clients as a result. Now, as I mentioned earlier, this is one key to getting clients, but there are a number of other things you gotta have in place in your business in order to get on track to signing more coaching clients more consistently. So if you're looking for a roadmap that you can follow to help you do this, I recommend downloading our free Get More Clients Guide for Coaches that walks through so much more of my best advice to help you do that. And you can get this completely free by clicking the link above or in the description down below. And if you enjoyed this video, you're definitely going to love that one too. So click the link on the screen to go check that out and I'll see you in the next video.